Jamie, did you get all those headshots? I did. You ready to put them in? I am. You got 10 minutes. Yeah, they like to give you a short time limit. One. We're streaming right now. Got it? Guys, stop touching stuff. Don't, don't touch it. Go through the other door. Use that one. So plug that into that box yep. and that plugs into there. Yeah. Got it? Okay.
Good. Uh, and yeah, that's pull that's that for
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with assistant head coach, Mike McWilliam of the St. Sturgeon Heights Huskies. And he's just gonna answer a couple questions about what he expects from the game today. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Hey, no problem. So you have not played against the Lancers so far this season. What can you expect to, see, uh, to be different from the other games you played this year? What are you looking for? Well, a lot of the teams in our league are, uh, are running teams. Um, and the teams that we played have really kept the ball on the ground. And I think Dakota is one of those teams that likes to air the ball, that like to throw the ball. So we're going to have to prepare ourselves uh, defensively for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, an attack that basically will come through the air, but they will run the ball. Their quarterback's very, very uh, um, mobile, agile, and uh, he'll keep a play alive. So we just have to be ready for pretty well for anything for these guys. They're a good team. How are the kids on the bus on the trip here? Are they ready? Are they loose? Yeah, it's hard to say with our guys sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're really gung-ho and ready to go at it, and sometimes they're pretty tired, or sorry, pretty quiet. It was a quiet bus ride, so I think a lot of, we have 20 seniors, so I think the seniors recognize that if we lose this football game, you know, that's the end of their high school football careers. So I think they're pretty focused, and, uh, you know, I noticed that Dakota was uh, pretty rah-rah and loud when they came out here. Our guys I sort of have a quiet intensity to them, so hopefully it'll turn out okay. Okay, thanks for your time. You're very welcome. Today, Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.
Winnipeg, the Winnipeg High School football action. My name is Brian Cameron and I'm with the Louis Riel School Division LRSD TV broadcast media program and we're presenting to you uh, the first of uh, some playoff and uh, football action this year at, uh, for 2017. We're getting ready for the game but prior to the start of the game I had a chance to speak to some of the coaches from each teams and, and get their perspective on how, what we can expect today. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with assistant head coach Mike McWilliam of the St. Sturgeon Heights Huskies. And he's just going to answer a couple questions about what he expects from the game today. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Hey, no problem. So you have not played against the Lancers so far this season. What can you expect to see uh, to be different from the other games you played this year? What are you looking for? Well, a lot of the teams in our league are, uh, are running teams. Um, and the teams that we played have really kept the ball on the ground. And I think Dakota is one of those teams that likes to air the ball, that like to throw the ball. So we're going to have to prepare ourselves uh, defensively for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, an attack that basically will come through the air, but they will run the ball. The quarterback's very, very uh, uh, mobile, agile, and uh, he'll keep the play alive. So we just have to be ready for pretty well for anything for these guys. They're a good team. How are the kids on the bus on the trip here? Are they ready? Are they loose? Yeah, it's hard to say with our guys sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're really gung-ho and ready to go at it, and sometimes they're pretty tired. Uh, sorry, pretty quiet. It was a quiet bus ride. So I think a lot of we have 20 seniors. So I think the seniors recognize that if we lose this football game, you know, that's the end of their high school football careers. So I think they're pretty focused. And, uh, you know, I noticed that Dakota was uh, pretty rah-rah and loud when they come out here. Our guys I sort of have a quiet intensity to them. So hopefully it'll turn out okay. Okay. Thanks for your time, and good luck today, Coach. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'm here with Dylan Von Dolan, defensive line coach from the Dakota Lancers, and get, just getting ready for the first playoff game at uh, Murray Field. Dylan, can you tell us about how you got rid of, uh, get ready for this game versus other games this year? Uh, honestly, we were just trying to uh, get the guys prepared. We've been working with them all season long. This is another game. We're just making it uh, work on their strategy, make it work for them. Now you haven't seen the Surgeon Heights Huskies this year, so what do you think you had to do to get ready for this game versus the other games? Uh, honestly, they have a good quarterback that will roll out on us. We uh, have to have a good solid line to keep them contained. Uh, DBs have to cover really well and our offense just has to move the ball down the yards and we'll all be good. Just before the game, how are the kids? Were they tight? Were they loose? Were they ready? <laughs> uh, honestly, the kids are ready to play. Last night uh, there was a big snowstorm, so I think they're ready to play in any uh, atmosphere or environment okay. possible. Thanks, time. Thank you very much. All right. Right, so uh, back and getting ready for the game. We can see that the coin toss is taking place at the halftime. I'm going to introduce you to Greg Kiesman, who's joining us today on uh, Color, and welcome to uh, the afternoon action, Greg. Thank you, Brian. It's uh, it's an honor to be here at Dakota Collegiate here at uh, Murray Field. And I was going to start off by saying the frozen tundra, but today we've got a little bit of sunshine and and uh, clear conditions. I understand that there are some games that were rescheduled last night in the Winnipeg High School Football League due to due to bad weather conditions. So it's a wonderful day here. We got beautiful sunshine. We're about hovering around zero degrees just at kickoff. So I anticipate a, a great matchup between the Dakota Lancers and, and uh, Sturgeon Heights uh, Huskies here at uh, Murray Field. So, you know, it, always exciting. And one of the things I, I know the, the coach uh, Dylan from Lancers talked about today, and that, that's uh, the number of kids who were on the you know, getting ready for the last game and looking at this as possibly the last game of the season. And I mean, you've played enough football. You remember what that's like. Uh, tell me what you're thinking, right? What they're thinking right now. Yeah. I mean, every time you play a game, it, 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 you never know if it's going to be your last one. Uh, you always prepare for the next season and stuff like that. But as a player, you, you, you never know when it's going to be your last one, especially at amateur football level. Um, as a coach, uh, coaching high school football, obviously, uh, this is a tough tough week because for some of these grade 12 kids this might be the last football game that they could play so as a coach you want to emphasize to go out there and do your best have a lot of fun uh, make it a memorable time for yourself because uh, one of these one of these teams is going home today disappointed and there'll be some tears rolling down cheeks because uh, this could be uh, their last game and and on the flip side the winning team gets to play a 
play another game next week, and and who knows, maybe they get another another game out of that in the Anavitz Bowl in the uh, Winnipeg High School Football League Championship uh, next uh, November 9th, I believe it is. So we have uh, two teams here, and as we're getting ready for the kickoff, uh, the Dakota Lancers finished at five and two, while Sturgeon Heights Huskies finished at three and four. Uh, Dakota finishing third, and, and Sturgeon Heights finishing sixth. Uh, so, you know, but when we looked at uh, compared stats before the game and looked at uh, each team individually, they seem to be pretty close. So we're looking for a good game today. And here we go with our kickoff, and up and uh, comes down and picked up at about the 25-yard line. We'll cut up the middle and be tackled in the play. Break up for a little bit more, get up to about the 39-yard line. Great start to the game and great field position for Dakota. Find a little bit of room up the middle. So again, Dakota's in uh, black and yellow and, and Sturgeon Height is in white and maroon. And uh, looking forward to uh, to seeing what Sturgeon Heights has to offer. Both teams have not played each other this year, so so uh, be interesting matchup here. So first and 10 from Pardon me, Sturgeon Heights received the ball. <laughs> I better check on that. So they'll start from their own 39-yard line. Number 10, Liam Prendergrass, that's a quarterback, and will pitch to his left, but picked up and uh, taken down on the play almost immediately for a loss of about four yards on the play, anticipated quite well by the Dakota front line. No room there at all. Obviously, Dakota was uh, ready and willing to, to come up field and shut down that run play, forcing... Uh, Sturgeon into more of a, of a passing situation here, second and about 13. So Prendergrass will work from the shotgun on second and 13. Ball's a high snap, but he'll bring it down. Throws to his right, but it skips off of the ground short of the intended receiver. So Good. that will make it second and 13. Second and third and 13. Pardon so me, third and 13. Huge pressure from Ethan Papineau on that play there, forcing uh, Sturgeon Height to, to have a two and out here. Obviously not the way Sturgeon Heights would uh, have liked to open the game here. Good rush on the front by uh, the Dakota front line again to put some pressure on quarterback Liam Prendergast. So if it's a little hard to see on the screen here, but uh, Dakota receivers are, are staring into the sunshine. So this could play a factor with the punt. Uh, if it goes high enough, it could the, the guys could lose it in the sunshine here. Kicks up and a great kick away. Comes down at about the 45 yard line, fielded at about the 40. Gets up number 23 from Dakota and will get up to about the 50 yard line. So number 23 from Dakota is Kalen Christensen. Hmm. So Dakota will take over from their first offense in this playoff game uh, today for at their own 50-yard line. Great field position to start with. So Dakota quarterback Reed Van Conant, number 10, uh, the son of uh, former Blue Bomber Van Conant, Dave Van Conant, who uh, played for the Blue Bombers back a few years ago. Under center here. Good fist football history. And he will start in the shotgun. Well, but he'll hand it off right away and finding some room right up the num middle is number 34 from Dakota and will almost get right to the first down on his first play. Dre Ward on the carry there. Wonderful play. Good blocking, the good room up the middle. There is a flag down. And it appears to be against Dakota, so that's going to come back. And they're calling offside on Dakota, so that's going to bring that back. But a good, good play to start off with. Yeah, look for Dakota's offensive line to come out and fire hard and establish that line of scrimmage. Obviously, most games are won in the line of scrimmage or, or along the line of scrimmage with the offensive and defensive line play. So that makes it first and 15 from about their own 45-yard line. And Van Conant will continue in the shotgun and snap back. And he will look to his left side and throws the ball up to his tender receiver and caught on the play. It appears to be complete at about center field. Received on the play by number two from Dakota. Josh Yatchetson. So that's a great play on first and 15. Now it's going to be a second down in about six. Smart play by the Dakota quarterback to just get, you know, take whatever the Husky defense gave, uh, putting them in a situation where they don't have to have huge yards to get a, a first down here. So second and five or six. Van Conant looks this time, he will look to his right time. Flagged on the play already, but he will pull it in and go up down. He will have enough for the first down and get to about the 49-yard line of Sturgeon Heights, but we'll see what the flag is. 
It appears to be offside against Dakota, so that's going to come back and put them in a second and long situation. Again, on the wide receiver call there, so uh, coach is going to have to make some adjustments on those wide receivers. So pretty much right back to the original line of scrimmage. So second and 10. And it looks back and he will look to his left. Nothing there and he will look to his right. And he will then go back inside again. But a flag on the play. There is enough for the first down again to the 49-yard line once again for Sturgeon Heights. But another flag on the play. We'll see what the call is. This time it's against Sturgeon Heights. Penalties declined. So that will make it first and 10 from just... On this side, uh, the Dakota side of the Sturgeon 49 yard line, so first and 10. From what we could understand, it was illegal contact on a receiver by the Sturgeon Heights defensive back. That was the call. So, oh, looks like somebody either was pulled or drawn offside there. Flags on the play, blown dead right away, so we'll wait for the call here. Well, we've had a penalty-filled game so far. Oh, so we, far. We've had about eight plays, and I think we've had flags on five. We might be here for a while there, Greg. So it, it turns out to be offside against Sturgeon, so that will make it first and five for the Dakota Lancers. So you can see on your screen there, in the back behind uh, Dakota Collegiate, there's a little bit of snow down on the ground there, so... Uh, just a fantastic day here for football. But it is a gorgeous day for football. It's uh, it's not too cold and it's not too warm, and this is great football yeah, weather. There's no wind. Wind will not play a factor in this game today. So first and five. Van Conant will hand off this time and finding some room to the right side, but tackled actually at about the line of scrimmage this time is number five from Dakota, and that would be Nick Conway. We'll come back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a half yard gain. Number 22 from Sturgeon Heights came up and filled the hole nicely. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have him on my roster here, so I can't identify him. So that would be second and five. That kind of looks in. He will throw the ball and find a, a receiver right in the middle. And up, one of his favorite targets this year. And that would be number 88 from Dakota, Aiden Campbell. Nice job by the receiver there, catching it out in front of him and tucking the ball away uh, and, and driving forward. You want to go north-south and get as many yards as possible. So good job to get that first down by the receiver. Good patience from Van Conant to find the receiver in the middle too. As it looked like his initial look wasn't there. Hands off again to number five. We'll to take it out to the right side, but being pursued pretty closely by Sturgeon. Then in, Tackled on the play. Might be back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice initial upfield penetration by the uh, Sturgeon Heights uh, D lineman, uh, number 52, Brock Gutkowski. Kind of made the running back stop dead in his tracks and bump it outside. So great job there by 52. So that would make it second. And it actually looks like it's about a loss of a yard. So second and 11. And Van Conant drops back and looks to pass downfield and finds his receiver who will be break one tackle and get up about another five, six yards in the play to about the 25-yard line, but should be a yard or two short of the first down, it appears. Number 12, 12, uh, Chad Chicoin uh, came up and made the tackle there for Sturgeon Heights. So third and th about three, and the Dakota Lancers will go for it. Van Conant setting the shotgun with two backs. We'll hand off to right up the middle, number 34 from Dakota gets a uh, first yard and more, first down and more, gets to about the 18 yard line. So number 34 from Dakota is Dre Ward. Great run right up the middle, good blocking, uh, Greg. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to see that the surgeon height Huskies D-line has their hands on their hips. Usually that's a sign that they're getting a little bit tired here. So uh, you, obviously we're seeing uh, Dakota's offensive line getting a nice little push up field. So first and 10 and Van Kuna will hand off again to Dre Ward who will cut to his left. Get tackled down to about the 15 yard line. Uh, Dakota's had a fantastic drive here. They've been able to overcome some penalties, which is usually hard to do in high school football, and they're getting into the uh, red zone here and threatening to score. It appears to be a gain of about four yards, and so second and about six from the 15-yard line of Sturgeon Heights. Just over five minutes left in the first quarter, and, and Van Kunnett will look to pass. Nothing there, so he's being pursued and will try to find something to his right side and will eventually get pushed out, out of bounds short. The first down flags up in the air. And we'll wait to see what the call is, but it came in after it got tackled, so I'm anticipating possibly a tackle out of bounds, Greg. Yeah, it's out of my view here, but I was able to, we'll see the replay here. It comes right into your living room or on your computer. I guess we're not. Um, so it looks like it's rough play against uh, Sturgeon Heights. So that would give uh, Dakota an automatic first down and probably, uh, and we're just seeing where they're gonna set the first down mark from. Balls look, looks like it's marked on the one yard line. So first and goal. And Dakota threatens for the first touchdown of our playoff game today with about four minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Back and it goes right under center and will push right up the middle for the touchdown. Dakota, and six to nothing. We'll keep it simple, just easy quarterback keeper. Again, Dakota's offensive line is, is obviously winning the line of scrimmage battle here, so might as well uh, put your trust in the Hoggies to move it forward there. Great first series for the Dakota Lancers. So they're setting up for the point after. And good start. And the, first, the point after will count, so Dakota strikes first with the first touchdown with 4 minutes and 40 seconds left in the first quarter. 7 to nothing, Dakota over the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Well, I'm really impressed with Dakota, how they've come out and, and obviously diversified their offense. They, they can run the ball, they can throw the ball. Uh, Reed Van Conant looks like he's uh, quite comfortable running out of the pocket or scrambling out of the pocket and being able to look downfield and find the receiver. Um, as a, as a defense coordinator, it's always difficult to, you know, you, you always want to try to say, let's take away uh, the run game or let's try to take away this pass game. But if you have so many guns or so many weapons that you can go after, it makes it very hard on a defense coordinator to try to try to focus that. So our first kickoff for the game, and we'll see uh, Sturgeon Heights with two returners back at about their 15, 20 yard line. And it's kicked off by number seven from Dakota, who will get a great kick away. Come down to about the 21-yard line, and he will continue right up the middle, cut to his right, and eventually be caught at about the 20, 35-yard line. Good return. Number five, Sim, Simon Winsness from Sturgeon Height had a nice, uh, nice job catching the ball in the air and, and getting some positive yards. So I believe that was number seven from Dakota who kicked off Hassan Nasser. So Sturgeon Heights will take over for the second offense from their 36 yard line, down seven to nothing and Prendergrass will hand off and look to the right side and get up to about the 40, 41 yard line. Nice gutsy run uh, from the Sturgeon Heights running back getting really nice penetration upfield. So they'll get about five yards on the play, second and five. And we're having a little bit of a difficulty sometimes picking up on the numbers from where our vantage point, but uh, it was a good run. So second and five and Prendergrass will start in the shotgun. We'll hand off right away and cutting to the middle and finding a bit of room and then cutting back to the right is number 27 from 
Sturgeon Heights will be brought down at about the 50 yard line. Great run, about a 10, 11 yard gain. And I'm looking at uh, Jacob Berland Allen. Great run. Yeah, fantastic balance and ability to cut back by the running back. You used to see on the on the uh, replay here, you know, nice stop and start and cut back to the right. Well done. So they will continue, and that would be actually their first first down. So number 27 again, takes it and find some room to the right side, and will be brought down and end up getting it about 10 yards, almost 10 yards on the play. Great run again by Jacob Berlin Allen. Uh, Sturgeon's Heights has uh, obviously found some success, so they're going to keep going to that play. And, uh, you know, I'm watching Berlin Allen from what I've seen. He's, you know, initial contact has not been able to slow him down. He's been able to make something happen. So second and about one. He ended up getting about nine yards on the play. So Prendergast, high snap. And again, he'll pitch back to... Uh, 27 again, who will get up and at about to about the 43 yard line. Gain of about four or five yards on the play, so that will give uh, Sturgis Heights their second first down of the game. So good series so far for Sturgeon Heights. Yeah, what, what a great job by their offensive line and, and uh, running backs just to get some really nice yards here. So again, he goes back to the well, but this time Dakota's ready for it, and he might have got a yard or two this time. Cutting to the right side again. So. Yeah, I didn't pick up too much there on, on, uh, on the run play. Uh, look for maybe uh, Sturgeon Heights to, to come back to that, but instead of handing the ball off, maybe they'll run a, a play action pass off of that. So second and still almost a full 10 yards. Prendergast will continue in the shotgun. Pitch out this time. And this time, uh, Berlin will go to his left side, but there is nothing there. Tackled on the play by number 33 and number 75 from Dakota. And that would be Jordan Friesen and Noah Pollock. It's a great pursuit by uh, a couple of Dakota front linemen there, a linebacker and a lineman, pardon me. So that will be third and 10. And unfortunately for Sturgeon Heights, they stall on this drive and will be punting the ball away. From the Dakota 43 yard line, balls up. Kicks away and a great kick away by the Sturgeon Knight. will put it down to about the outside and it goes out of bound at about the seven yard line. Wow, as a coach, you couldn't ask for much more of a better kick than that. So now Dakota has a nice long field for them to, to score. You know, Brian, they're, they're, I have to mention that uh, uh, Sturgeon Heights has a very strong history of having fantastic running backs. Anthony Coombs, and, uh, who plays for Toronto Argonauts, and Keenan LaFrance, who plays for Saskatchewan. And uh, Keenan won a, a Grey Cup last year with Ottawa as a running back. So sir, they, they've had some wonderful, fantastic CFL uh, caliber players coming out of that program there. And the quality, and you can see the quality. And I know the program's been around for a long time because it, it has been there when, back in the way back when, when I was still in high school. So clearly a strong history. So Dakota will start from the seven yard line and pitch, pitch, I mean, sorry, handoff. And going inside and to his right side is number five from Dakota, uh, Nick Conway again, who will get up and looks like get about four or five yards on the play. Gets up to about the 15 yard line. So check that. He's going to actually get about eight yards on the play. And I'd also be remiss to, to not uh, talk about Wade Miller, uh, CEO of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's also a, a Sturgeon Height grad. Former Husky. Back on hands off again this time and cutting up the middle and not finding a lot of room. So we will see if they manage to get themselves close to that first down. This was a, a difficult exchange. This is obviously a, a read by the quarterback and running back. Um, the, the quarterback has the option to, to keep it and, and run the ball himself, uh, depending on what they what he sees out of the Sturgeon Heights defense. So a little bit of a of a not a great exchange there between the quarterback and running back. 
So we have run out of time on the first quarter, but this will be so. This should be the last play. But it appears to me yeah, Dakota is going to punt it away. Number seven again, Hassan Nasser will punt the ball from about his two three yard line. Will kick away. Does get a good kick away. Comes down at about the 45 yard line. Fielded just across center. Picked up by number five from Sturgeon Heights. Will cut out to his left, but will eventually be pushed out of bounds just inside the Dakota side of the center line. So good starting position there, uh, field position for. Uh, Sturgeon Heights as we start the second quarter, Dakota yeah. up seven to nothing. Th this is a, that's a great position uh, as a coach where you um, you have to decide are you going to maybe con uh, give up two points and and give up the safety and, and gain the field position, but obviously uh, uh, Dakota decided to punt the ball away and and uh, uh, put the defense in a situation where the, the coach is asking them to make sure that they stop them here. And so far, from what we've seen from uh, Hassan Nasser, he's been able to kick the ball fairly well. So I would see that, uh, that you know, understand that having that kind of confidence, I would probably do the same thing. So actually, as it turns out, he will, went out of bounds on the Sturgeon Heights side of center line. So they'll start from about the, sorry, no, I forgot the reverse field. So Dakota side, handed off right away again to number 27, Jacob Berlin Allen, but not a lot of room there. So appears that Dakota is watching and is able to read the plays that are uh, the running plays from Sturgeon Heights a lot better over the last couple uh, series. Yeah, I mean, Sturgeon Heights, they had great success uh, at the end of the first quarter. They're running the ball, so they're going to keep going with it. Uh, obviously, Dakota's uh, coaches and, and players have realized that we got to stop this play and, and now look for Sturgeon Heights to, to possibly do some play action where they fake the run and make a pass off that. Prendergast this time, for the first time, Prendergast looks to pass and he will throw down and complete. And up to about the 48 yard line, but well short of the first down is complete, uh, caught on the play by number 15 from the Sturgeon offense. And that would be Jake, Jake Roger. Roger. And it looks like, and actually as we look at our numbers here, Jake Roger is uh, Liam Prendergast's favorite target this year. Oh, Stan, I'm missing you. So he's about three, four yards short, uh, short of the first down. I don't know how it's going. So the ball is set at the Dakota 46-yard uh, line. And it appears that Sturgeon will punt the ball away. Simon, oh, a great kick, and be fielded at about the seven-yard line. Cutting to his right side is number 23 to Dakota. Be tracked down and be eventually tackled, and there is a flag down on the play at about the f eventually tackled at about 15 yard lines. Uh, Dakota's number 23. Effort lens. Which one? See the highlight of that nice, beautiful spiral, high driving punt. Nice job catching the ball in the air. Just you know. It, it, a couple, uh, couple blocks there and, and maybe would have got a few more yards of it. But there is a flag on the place. It looks like they're back in Dakota up. So they're definitely in the shadows of their own goal post. So it appears that Dakota illegal block will put them back at their own five yard line. So they will start first and 10 in the second quarter with 10.25 left. Up seven to nothing over the Surgeon Heights Huskies. And Vanconet will, this time he will line up under center. And hand off right away and looking to get inside, but tackled and brought down maybe to about the 10 yard line, gain of about five. And it appears to again, once again be Dre Ward. I might be wrong on that. So gain of about five, so second and five. Give me a second, you can't move. Back and I will back up into the shot, shotgun. It's starting to work now? New battery? And this time he is brought down and could go, breaks free of the tackle, throws down the field and will fall just short of his intended receiver, number two from Dakota, and that is Josh Yachitson. And so Dakota, from deep within their own end zone, I'm sorry, deep within their own uh, side of the field, 
is going to have to decide what they're going to do. What would you, what would you, th what would you anticipate, Craig? Well, again, it, this is one of those tough situations. Do you give up two to gain the f field position? You have to kick the ball off, but you're, you're obviously not going to do that. So, obviously, Dakota is going to be punting here, or at least lined up to do that. It's a very difficult call. It's a, it's a close game. Hard to give up two points. So ball goes back, and no, they will punt, and a, a good kick. It's a little high. It's coming down at about the 35-yard line and will be fielded about the 37, picked up by number seven from Sturgeon Heights, who will be found right away, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a no yards call. Yeah, so the, because the ball is on the ground, they're going to move it up five yards based on that no yards call. So fielded by number seven, Riley Pierce, and uh, Sturgeon Heights will have great field position to start off uh, this series in the second quarter. Yeah, so the refs are just moving up five yards here. Um, you know, Dakota's going to have to stop them here, or, or um, they're going to they're going to have to stop them here, and get the ball back for the offense, and the offense is going to have to turn that field around. You don't want to play in your end all game. Great starting position for Sturgeon as he takes the ball and hands off to and continue with looking to get goal of Jacob Berlin Allen, but anticipated quite well by the Dakota front line and. I'm looking, it appears like number 66 from Dakota, uh, who is uh, Connor Lushaw, seemed to be the first person in on the tackle there. Yeah, he just kind of ran into a, a black and gold uh, steel line there, steel wall. Number 77, Ethan Papano was also in on that tackle. A loss of a yard, and Prendergast will look back, and this time he will look past and complete to his receiver, number 15, who will eventually be tackled and pushed out of bounds and trying to catch it looks at about the 24 yard line that should be well short of the first down looks like number four hugh irvine uh, was on the coverage there and made the tackle so number 15 jake roger again uh, prendergrass's favorite target this year i'm and impressed it, with prendergrass's arm strength that was that was a nice throw so he's, it appears that Sturgeon's going to go for it with a, about third, maybe f uh, four, and he'll throw it up and this oh, time knocked nice down. Job. So turnover on downs, good anticipation. And we're, I'm trying to catch the number. It looks like number 53 from the Dakota uh, defense. Rafael Caligari. Sorry if I mis mispronounce that. So good anticipation, the ball gets knocked down and Dakota will take over on downs and in much better field position than they had just a few minutes ago. You know, as, as a defense alignment, what you want to, if you're not going to be close to making a sack, you want to sit back there. Quarterback's uh, going to throw the ball. You get your, your big mitts up in the air and try to knock the ball down. So that's a great job by the D-line coach and D-line player. So first and 10 from about their 23-yard line. Panicut hands off and cutting to the, his right side is number 34 again. We'll get up to about the 30-yard line. Dre Ward continues to make some happen, although he just typically really seems to have to work hard for those yards. Yeah, you know, it, again, it's oh, just wow. a, it's a great job by the offensive line just to drive forward and get that uh, upfield uh, block. And, and, you know, if, if the running back doesn't get touched before he goes through the line of scrimmage, that's that's always a great thing for the, for the offense. So second and five, and he will continue to go inside. This time to number five from Dakota, who will continue to bounce oh, a fumble oh. on the play. Picked up and recovered by Sturgeon Heights, who will pick it up from the 40-yard line. At least from where we are, it appears to be Sturgeon Heights' ball. Probably. Nope, sorry, Dakota did manage to recover it back again. So, so they will take it over from the 40-yard line. So first and 10. The ball here on that play was uh, uh, for Dakota was uh, Nick Conway. So, and, and Nick Conway is one of the players that has been indicated by the coaches to watch, and, and Nick has had a good season this year, uh, uh, you know, as a running back and as a receiver. And of course, wouldn't get much more without Reed Vanconet, who has had a great season this year, uh, 115 attempts and 50 completions. And of course, Josh Ma is another st a player that was indicated from uh, as someone to watch. Noah Pollock is another. Uh, player who's played very well this, show, this year for Dakota and of course let's not forget Vankinet's favorite target Aiden Campbell who we've seen and called upon several times this game and uh, 
just a great job by those youngsters and, and players that have been indicated to uh, us as players to watch this game. And we've, we have seen them uh, show the, we make sure they're known so far already. So Vancouver hands off uh, to, again, to number 34 uh, inside to Dre Ward. Maybe Dre Ward should have been on that list, Greg. Yeah, I know he's having a fantastic game. So, of course, uh, you know, we have to look at both sides of the ball. And then from uh, indicated to watch is Simon Winces from uh, uh, Sturgeon Heights, who's had a great season this year. And we've seen his number called a few times. Riley Pierce kicking uh, or, or uh, definitely uh, had, is having a great season. Jake Roger, as we've seen the ball be thrown to a couple times this year uh, uh, for Sturgeon Heights. Uh, Jacob Berland Allen, of course, uh, and he's received the ball on a number of occasions on the run ball and has, you know, uh, had, a, had a, a success earlier. Contained fairly well over the last few plays, but continues to, uh, to grind it out. So in the last play there, you could see uh, Van Kona was uh, rolling to his right there. And, you know, smart play just to throw it away. Don't take the sack. Don't lose yards. Just throw it out of bounds and, and live to play another game, another uh, series here. So third and about eight, and the Dakota will punt the ball away. And a decent punt, pretty little high in the air. Fielded at about the 30-yard line and will eventually push out of bounds and flag on the play. At about 30, at the 38-yard line. So we'll wait to see what the, the flag is. But, uh, you know, after that first series, it, Sturgeon Heights has actually managed to contain the Dakota offense fairly well, Greg. Yeah, I mean, Dakota uh, has not, it started the second quarter here, has not had great field position. So, you know what, as a coach, that's a victory. Just to get it out from inside our own 20-yard line, get it out. Uh, and, yeah, we're going to turn the ball over here, but at least we're giving them a much longer field for Sturgeon Heights to try to score. So as a coach, you're going to say, yeah, you know what, we, we did get the ball. We didn't su so we, we didn't surrender a safety. We're moving the ball out of our own end, so we're winning the field position battle despite those penalties. Sturgeon Heights will take over from their own 53-yard line and maybe try to make something happen, but bad snap and the ball gets picked up on the round, but maybe works to their favor as number 23 from Sturgeon will get up and get about a 12, 13-yard gain on the play. And I'm looking here at number... Number 27 was the ball carrier. Oh, oh, pardon me, on number Jacob 27. Jacob Berlin Allen. Jacob Berlin Allen, I said number 23, but number 27. And number 20, Scott Brackle from Dakota came up and uh, did a nice, had a nice tackle there. So Prendergrass will continue to work from the shotgun. Ball's up, and this time he's going to swing out to his right and look to pass. Oh, will nice evade move. one tackle, and now we'll take it up on the field himself and will run out of bounds and gain of about four yards on the play. Nice little hesitation there to make the D-lineman commit to him and then just go around him. So smart play by Pendergrass there to just, uh, as, a deep, as a former defensive lineman, it's like, oh, what are those ones where you're licking your chops, you're going to get a sack, and all of a sudden the guy does a little move on you, shake and break, break, breaks your ankles. and a little juke and, and gets, he's gone. Yeah, it gets outside of your contain there. So. so gain of about three on the play, so second and seven. Pendergrass will pitch to his right to a reliable who will push it. We got flags down on the play all over the place and pushing up and should have the first down and beyond, but we'll see what the flags are. Flags is back in, yeah, the referee's already indicating the, the, the flag is in the back uh, backfield of Sturgeon Heights, so it looks like it's going to be holding on Sturgeon Heights. I didn't catch the holding call, but uh, obviously there was a nice hole out there, so could have been on the point of attack there on, on number eight on Dakota there. Good run by Jacob uh, Berlin Allen, and it's too bad that that's going to be taken away from him. So that will make it second and about 17 on the play. So as a defensive coordinator, you're kind of thinking, you know what, you want to watch screen or something here. So looking down, and, and Prendergast is looking deep, but there's nothing there. He'll escape one tackle, but oh, eventually sacked down. on the play. Great pursuit by the Dakota D-line I'm looking at. Jordan Friesen, number 75, came from the left defensive end position and, and pursued and, and tracked down uh, uh, Pendergrass there. So great job by the, by the defensive uh, end from Dakota Lancers. Boy, you're looking at number 75 there. Uh, number 75, uh, um, 
Jordan Friesen, and you, you, he just looks like a football player out there. Big number 75. He's got the long arms and great athletic ability. So third and very long, and Sturgeon will be punting. Good kick away again, and the ball will come down right in the vicinity and be pit fielded at about the 28-yard line. Flags all over the place, likely no yards. But a decent kick by the Sturgeon Heights kicker who continues to, at least that part of the game has come up pretty good. So Dakota will take over, I'm thinking likely over their 30-yard line. Waiting for the call from the ref. Yeah, yeah, no yards. No yards. So with three minutes, just over three minutes left in the second quarter, it is Dakota seven. Sturgeon no score yet. So Van Cotton will look back and will find a receiver open in the middle. Complete to number two. Josh Janssen again. So our numbers for Josh Janssen weren't as high as uh, as his, one of his favorite receivers, of course, Aiden Campbell, but seems to be mixing it up between the two of them pretty good, Greg. Yeah, I mean, uh, Van Conner has a lot of poise sitting back there in the in in, uh, in the uh, looking downfield, looking for his uh, different receivers. He he doesn't he doesn't have those happy feet or nervous feet that make him look like he's uh, anxious to get rid of the ball there. He, he's showing a lot of composure, just waiting for the receiver to get open and delivering the strike. So that will be first down, so they would take over from their 48 yard line, their own 48 line. Complete again this time to his other favorite target, number 88, Aiden Campbell. Nice throw by Van Conant. Obviously running to your left a little bit, uh, a little bit harder to throw if you're right-handed. You can just see on, on the replay here, it was a nicely delivered ball. A gain of about eight yards on the play, so second and two, a long two. And Dakota's uh, si coaches are sign signaling in the play fairly quickly here, so they want to keep uh, keep the momentum going. So Van Kuna will start under center, hand off to number three, but he will be caught. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage might even be a, a tiny bit of a loss there. Yeah, it's just a zone read left basically, and and uh, Sturgeon Heights read that well, and and were able to dominate that uh, that line of scrimmage that that play. So third and about three, and it appears that Dakota is bringing out the big boys. You no, know, Brian, check not, that. They're going to be punting. Not a bad spot to fake either. Third and short, middle of the field. Nasser's back to receive the ball, but no, oh, he's punting away. And oh, a bit of a, not a great one, but it's fielded at about the 25 yard line and cutting to his right. Eventually caught down and brought down at about the 35 yard line where Sturgeon Heights will take over with a minute 54 left in the second quarter. Looks like it was number seven Riley Pierce on the uh, on the punt return. So there was a whole Early horde of uh, Lancers in to make that tackle. Yeah, the, the thing is... Uh, so pretty much Arizona back and forth over the last little while, Greg, not... Not much, yeah, uh, if I haven't seen my the camera from uh, this end zone threatened for a little while. Yeah, I mean, uh, both offenses have gotten first downs and moved the ball fairly effectively, but no no huge big play or anything like that just yet. So going right up the middle, it looks like it's uh, Jacob Berlin Allen again. That was a nice fake by the quarterback there. Obviously, the, the Dakota defensive ends have to respect the fact that the quarterback could keep the keep the ball. So that's what opens up that play a lot too. If the defensive linemen or defensive ends crash down on the running back, then there's less room. If they if they stay wide and respect the quarterback's ability to run the ball, then it opens up more of that offensive uh, or space in between the tackles. So second three, they go back to Berlin and the gallon, but this time he's covered right away. Looks like 66 Connor Lushaw for, uh, for Dakota was in on uh, great uh, backfield penetration there and, and was able to make the tackle. Good anticipation by the Dakota line. It might even be a bit of a loss on this play. Yeah, they will back it up just a little bit. So it makes it uh, second and four or so. Third and four, pardon me. So Dakota has two returners back. Number five, 
Nick Conway, and I can't see the other number, but there's two back there. Flag on the play. Almost right away, so blown dead. This is interesting because that's a side judge who called this or threw the flag. Uh, obviously, if it's against Dakota, then this would be a first down. Oh, it's procedure against Sturgeon Heights. So that will push them back a little bit further. And Punter, number five, Simon Winson, Winsness, and I pardon me if, I, if I'm not pronouncing that properly, Simon, but a little confused by the call. So obviously somebody jumped along the Sturgeon Height uh, offensive line there. Here we go again, another punt and a, and a good punt away. Comes down at about the 45 yard line, fielded at about the 37. Coming to his left side is number 23 from Dakota who will eventually push down and tackled at about the 48 yard line. So number 23 from Dakota, who we've seen catch a few, uh, take field a few of these kickoffs. Or Everett uh, Lenz. Punts. Everett Lenz from Dakota, and number 82, Daniel Adams from Sturgeon Heights had the tackle. I'll tell you what, if, if uh, Adams hadn't been there to make that tackle, there, and uh, Lenz was able to get around that corner, it could have been some big yards for Dakota. Shot of the fans here, so you can see, uh, although it's, uh, you know, Yesterday we got a lot of snow and stuff like that. There's still a lot of fans coming out today. First and ten, and we'll try a bit of a sweep to the right side, and but tackled behind the line of scrimmage, and a great anticipation on the play. And actually is number 27, Jacob Berlin Allen, who is playing defense also. Yeah, Dakota ran the jet sweep there to number 80, Ethan uh, Denell, uh, and uh, without really lo while well, losing about two, almost three yards there. You know, kudos to Sturgeon Heights defense after giving up an early touchdown in the first quarter. They've they've really stepped up here. So second and about 14. Back in it looks back, back and will look to look pass downfield and finds his complete his receiver. Number 88 from Dakota will push up and get close to the first down. Looks to be about two, maybe th maybe about two yards short. Aiden Campbell. Boy, what a great job there. You know, as a, as a coach, you want to say go north-south, and that's exactly what he did there. Put his shoulder down, try to gain as much yards as possible. Two yards short, and Dakota will go for it. With 26 seconds left in the second quarter. Right underneath, and Van Cunnen lines up, but it appears... Timeout, so Sturgeon. Sturgeon has called a timeout. So... You are on just on the Sturgeon side of center field, Greg. You got 26, 17 seconds left. Pardon me. And uh, the score's up seven to nothing. What are you going to do here? Well, for sure, you got two plays with 17, maybe three, maybe three plays in 17 seconds. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your timeouts effectively. You're probably going to want to throw the ball. Uh, this is not the CFL or NFL. You're not going to try to throw the ball in the end zone and get an interference call because it's only a 15 yard penalty. But you want to you want to maybe move it into a, f a position where you can get into the end zone or, or a throw because right now the ball's just uh, just over center field. So if we could get about a 20 yard gain here and then respond back with a second play, you could probably try to get uh, a throw down into the end zone. And that's a good point, right? In the in the high school football, uh, pass interference calls only a 15 yard penalty. It's not point of contact. So, oh. so Van Kennett's right under center. He's stopping the okay with a push to his right side, but flags almost right away on the play, so let's we'll see what the call, and we're down to 11 seconds. Offside Sturgeon Heights of Paris. Yeah. So with the flag, the, the clock will not start, start until the snap of the ball. That makes it an automatic first down, and we now have... Well, they're putting two seconds back on the clock again, so 13 seconds left in the second quarter. So you got two plays. You have two plays with 13 seconds left. So Dakota up 7 to nothing. We'll go first and 10. Yards to the crew is a little, uh, little late there moving, so we're just uh, a little timeout for them to get ready. So from the 49-yard line, 
Back on it back to Paston. He will look down and get rid of the ball right away. Complete to number seven. Who will get up to Hassan Nasser from Dakota. Will get them down to about the 30-yard line. 30, 31-yard line they're placing the ball at. So great play. Yeah, you have, that's exactly what, uh, what we were talking about, Brian. You know, a gain of about 20 yards, put them down to about the 30-yard line. Now they, can, uh, now they can reach the end zone with one throw here. So at about, you know, with now down, that only, that only took five seconds left on the clock, so we've got mm -hmm. eight seconds left in the second quarter. Dakota up seven to nothing, but threatening to score. You might even be able to get two left, a two play still. Right? Yeah, it depends how fast uh, Van Kona gets the ball out of his hands here. So back to pass, and he will get the ball fairly quickly. He's going to look to the corner to his favorite receiver, Campbell. And there flag, is flag on the play. Yep. And we have, I'm looking down, we have two seconds left on the clock. So I'll be up 15 yards, so that should take the ball down to just around the 15 yard line. Again, plenty, it gives you a little bit more advantage. You can obviously throw directly into the end zone here. That was a nice co uh, post corner pattern by the receiver there. Looks like Dakota might be bringing out their field goal unit though. Well, there is, now on the, uh, I'm looking at the game clock, it says three seconds. Our clock says two seconds, but really, in this, at this perspective, it's not much of a difference anyway. So, you know, I think they're going to try to go for the sure points. And mm -hmm. So this puts the ball down. It appears to be about the 16-yard line. Looks like number seven, Hassan Nasser, is uh, in to kick the field goal. Just as the ball was getting snapped, we had a <laughs> ball. We got a timeout now, Sturgeon Heights. Love this. This is NFL, CFL like. Mm -hmm. We're going to call timeout. We're going to ice the kicker. Why? Because LRSD TV is here. We're going to make them all nervous on the field. So, again, uh, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, right? We have the snap, we have the hold, then we have the kick. So, uh, this in, in amateur football, this is not a gimme type of play here. Um, the other thing that you'll notice here is that. Uh, on, on the view is is uh, Surgeon Heights only has one returner in the back in the in, in the end zone. So sometimes you get uh, teams that will punt it out so they don't give up a point. Kick is up, and it is good. So that right. gives Dakota another three points. And right at the end of the second quarter, Dakota now goes up ten to nothing over top of the Sturgeon Heights Huskies at our quarterfinal game at Murray Field at Dakota Collegiate. So we've had a, an excellent football game, a football, a half of football so far, Greg. And uh, although the score hasn't showed it uh, for Sturgeon Huskies, I think that uh, they've played better than the uh, than it's shown, and especially holding up uh, Dakota's offense as long as they did, scoring on the first series and then scoring on the last series just before the quarter. Yeah, you know, it, it, great way for Dakota to finish off. It's exactly what we talked about. You know, get that 20-yard gain, get it within a. Uh, an area where get it on the field position where where you have the ability to, to, to throw it into the end zone uh, unfortunately for Sturgeon Heights we they had the pass interference call uh, giving uh, Dakota a much closer uh, field goal uh, both teams have explosive players we haven't seen a lot of huge or long plays or big plays here just yet but I have a feeling in the second half we're going to see that. I think both teams are, are trying to control the o o uh, offensive and defensive line of scrimmages. They're trying to use the run game to, to wear down their players and uh, the opposition. Uh, so look for the second half. To, uh, I look for in the second half for bigger plays, more exciting plays to happen. Okay folks, so we're going to take a bit of a break for a few minutes. So come back to us in about uh, eight minutes or so and uh, we're going to pick up in the, for the second half of the quarterfinal of the Enovitz Bowl. Dakota Lancers versus the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Thanks for joining us. Here at ATC is an excellent and fun eight credit program that gives the students the opportunity to be a part of the TV, radio, and media industry. They're going to learn the basics of broadcast media. So they're going to be learning how to be on air people, how to work a camera, be technical people behind the scenes, editing, special effects, graphics. We're going to show them how to do films, documentaries, news. There's so many aspects to broadcasting nowadays. It's just not as simple as, I'm going to be a cameraman at a news station. They can do so much more. So uh, we're going to teach a lot of different aspects of this industry. 
Students work on state-of-the-art computers, audio equipment, professional cameras, and a fully mobile production studio. That studio travels from school to school broadcasting live events on the LRSD.TV online TV station. The equipment we're using here at ATC is close to professional broadcasts as we possibly can afford. Obviously some things are very expensive so we can't afford buying all those things, but we're using professional cameras. Uh, we have a full-size switch here, which is very expensive, and we have a lot of equipment here, including a radio station that's using professional radio software, the same stuff you'd see at a radio station. We're trying to emulate industry as best we possibly can with what we have here, and I think it's really cool that students get to use these kind of toys at a high school level. Students also get to work on LRSD TV and LRSD radio. This will give students hands-on opportunities and real experiences that you would find on a professional job site. We actually are creating a TV station here and a radio station for students to hone their skills. The best way to do it is continuing to do it hands-on. So one of the things that we do a lot of are sporting events for television. And we're, we're going to be starting our radio program this year where students will actually be on the air and be able to be heard by family and friends on the internet. It's because of opportunities like this that makes the students excited to be part of this program. I would really say that this program has a lot to give. They teach you everything in every single detail, the theory part, the practical things. And uh, also you get to meet a lot of new people over here. You get to make contacts, you get to know about the industry a lot. So it's a really good uh, program if you're thinking about going in uh, photography or videography things so much in this course that you just don't know before you take it. Like, you don't really know broadcasting is a, you know, a job. Maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, and you, I learned everything about post-production. The teacher is great. He has experience in the industry and we use great equipment. By the end of the program, the goal is to prepare students for a career in the broadcasting industry or to move on to post-secondary education. Students can go on a four-week work experience Thanks to the experience they get here using professional equipment and broadcasting sporting events, students have the opportunity to get a job in the industry and find entry-level employment in the field as general operators, television assistants, camera operators, editors, and more. Now I work for Dome Productions that works under TSN and they do sports such as the Jets and the Bombers. So Mr. P gave out my name to TSN and got me the job for the Bombers and I did Parab. So they liked me and I ended up getting another job with the Jets. So I do the score bug for them. You want to join this exciting program? Go to our website or call us at 204-237-8951. Do you like making food? Do you want to be comfortable in any industrial or even home kitchen? The Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center's Culinary Arts Program will hone you into the chef you want to be. So what should you expect from culinary arts? They are working on a whole different kind of things from meat cutting, soups, sauces, uh, baking, as, long, as well as a work experience component uh, later on in the year. At the end of this program, graduates will be comfortable working with kitchen safety, breakfasts and dairy, stocks, soups and sauces, meats, poultry, fish and seafood, baking, cooking vegetables, starches and grains, garnishing, catering and buffet setup, as well as some of the managerial duties that come with working in a kitchen. This course is designed for hands-on learners. You spend most of the time learning in the kitchen. In the class we do about 30% uh, theory, 70% hands-on learning. So students at the start uh, they'll learn about the, the food safety and about the different forms of food poisoning and how to avoid that. One of the best parts of ATC's culinary arts is that you'll be surrounded by and work with people who are all as passionate about food as you are. I wanted to become a chef because I enjoy cooking and trying different things with food and just being adventurous. Like I'm very passionate about cooking food and it's really nice to know what you're cooking, what you're actually putting in your mouth, where it's come from, how it's prepared. And the best part is, the teachers are just as passionate about cooking as the students. I, I really enjoy Thai cooking, the, the floral and fragrance, you know, from things like galangal and, and all the different types of curry paste and the, the coconuts and there, there's a lot of great flavors coming out of, you know, Thai cooking. I really enjoy it. One of my favorite things to make is uh, homemade soups. So here at ATC we do make all our soups from scratch as well, so students get to learn how to make the stocks, 
from the bones first off. They learn how to make those stocks properly, how to hold them, and then with those stocks, we then go on and make our homemade soups. ATC's kitchen is prepared to teach you to work with anything you will encounter in the industry. It can teach you to work in a small kitchen or a large scale catering. So we cover quite a wide array of equipment here. Uh, we can do fine dining, but we're also versatile in the fact that we can do functions for up to a thousand people here. Here at ATC's Culinary Arts, the teachers will help you reach industry standards and they have connections which will help you network yourself into the restaurant industry. ATC is a good place to come and learn culinary because in the kitchen we have professionals and industry standards are kept. Uh, we have people here who have worked in the industry for many years and we keep current with the industry uh, with uh, working with other chefs as well. Chefs come in, they speak to the students, uh, they come in and do guest interviews for students. We are involved in the, in the community and in the hospitality industry. At the end of the program, ATC takes pride in getting their students work, putting them through quality work experience to add to their resume. So yeah, students can go to different, uh, they go to hotels, they go to restaurants, not so much chain restaurants a lot because what we teach here, I want them to practice when they go in the industry. So students can, if they elect, uh, they can go take apprenticeship in Manitoba. So they would get their level one with us at ATC. And then level two, they would move on to a post-secondary institution. If you're interested in this course or want more information, check out our website or call us at 204-237-8951. Louis Rio Arts and Technology Center, more known as ATC, is a vocational school for high school, post-secondary, and international students. The plumbing trade is one of the 13 programs that are taught. If you have a strong personal interest in piping and plumbing industry, this program is perfect for you. Students learn industry-approved methods of code applications and requirements for assembling, supporting, handling, and storing of piping and plumbing materials. Everything that students learn will be able to apply their skills in residential piping and plumbing, including sanitary drainage and water supply systems. It's uh, level one plumbing according to the Manitoba Apprenticeship and they learn the fundamentals of plumbing in this course. Class starts off with theory, soon moving into the practical section of the program. They learn uh, a lot of theory goes into it, plus practical applications that helps them uh, out on the job site. They learn about plumbing code, safe work practices, anything that's pertinent to uh, uh, safety and a lot of aspects in that nature. Eight credits are offered, four for one semester and the other four in the second semester. With state-of-the-art equipment, students can replicate the use of tools from a regular job site. Oh, it's, pretty, it's, it's a great work lab. We have, it's just, it's clean, it's safe, lots of room as well. And, um, you know, we just have all the time, we have a lot of time also to, to complete our projects as well. We learn almost everything about copper, drain waste and vent, iron pipe, how to thread, just general kind of like uh, plumbing maintenance stuff. The types of projects we've done so far is we've done copper projects, drain waste and venting projects. Uh, we even have some base set up here where we do like kind of fake bathrooms and we have sort of set up the fake bathrooms. The work lab consists of realistic problems for students to solve along with hands-on work. I am a hands-on guy so I'm not really uh, sitting in the cubicles so I think that made me to join the trades and uh, plumbing is uh, uh, right now in Manitoba from I heard as they are they need lots of plumbers, so that's also made me decide to join the plumbing trades. Some beneficial skills like good problem solving skills, the ability to work in a team environment, effective communication. Good afternoon and welcome back folks as we start the second half of our quarterfinal Anavet uh, division football game between the Dakota Lancers and the Sturgeon Heights Huskies and Dakota will take the ball to start off the second half and kicked off and picked up and ran up to about the 36, 37 yard line flag on the play. So to start the third quarter, we have Dakota moving from our left to right. So we're uh, getting, f so it looks like uh, that sun is starting to get down below the point where it might be a problem in Dakota's eyes now, but and then of course now we get another problem, Greg. The the new lights aren't up at the stadium yet, so could get a little dark. Yeah, well we'll just turn some of the cars and turn on the headlights and we'll be good. No, I think we'll be okay here. 
So, the Dakota up 10 to nothing over top of the Sturgeon Heights uh, Huskies, and they will start from about their own 23-yard line, banking it back to pass. Nothing there, so he will take it up the middle. Yeah, the pocket collapsed uh, pretty quickly on Van Conant there, so he's able to uh, uh, go right up the middle there and gain of about two or three yards. So second and about seven in the first series of the second half of this quarterfinal, the Anavid Division of the Winnipeg High School Football League between Dakota and Sturgeon Heights. Dakota up 10 to nothing. Duncan looks to his right side and to complete to number 23 who will find a bit of room and continue to push the right side, break free. Kind of kind of tripped on his own feet there for a second, Greg, but managed to get himself up and then eventually pushed out of bounds and gets up to about the 47-yard line. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, with this field turf, uh, it is fairly grippy. There's rubber and sand in there, and, and sometimes uh, uh, what we used to call in, back in the day was turf monsters. Turf monster kind of reaches up and just kind of trips you up. So a little bit of turf monster grabbed him and tripped him. So that was number 23, Everett Lenz, with that uh, good... Uh, reception and run. This time hand up that's and going right up the middle. Appears to be a gain of about five five yards on the play. Number 34, Dre Ward, who, you know, wasn't in the list of the five, but we've called his name quite a few times this afternoon. You know what, second, second down, gain of about almost six yards there. Nothing pretty about it, but very effective. So close to the center. Second and five from their own 53-yard line. Backing it with two backs behind him. He'll drop back, look for Pressure. something there. But this time, Sturgeon Heights will... No, he breaks free, finds his receiver complete. Gets up to about the 49-yard line of Sturgeon Heights. Campbell with the reception. Campbell with the reception. Great job by Vankinet to break free of those tackles in, uh, in the grasp and, and make something out of a pos potential big loss, Greg. Yeah, you know, that was a that was a great move. Uh, obviously frustrating for, for Sturgeon Heights, but great job by Van Conant to elude the uh, the pressure, roll to his left and find the open receiver, uh, Campbell. And, and uh, wow, what a great play. So first and 10 from the Sturgeon Heights 49, and Dakota comes out strong to start the second half. This time, well, Van Conant looks to his right, left, and comes back to his right, and Complete again to receiver number 23 to go to find some room and get all the way down and eventually push out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Nice little play there. Uh, Vancouver looks left, rolls left, stops, pauses, comes back and throws right. Uh, I didn't get the receiver number. Number 23, Everett Lenz again. Yeah, and, and big number 34, Ward was out there leading the blocking. So great job, great call by the. Uh, uh, Dakota uh, coaching staff and great throw by uh, Van Conant. Obviously down to the red zone here. So first and 10 from the 13 yard line it appears. Uh, steps back and again he will continue looking to the right side. Fumble. Fumble on the play. And we'll wait to see what happens here. Who's got the ball? It appears that Dakota's managed to get it back again. It's picked up on the play by number 61 from Dakota. Ryan Johnson. Johnny on the spot, Johnson. So ends up getting about a yard gain on the play. So second and nine from the t uh, 12 yard line. You know, offensive linemen always dream of picking up that ball and scoring, right? Back and it looks back to pass and he will throw the ball to the center and complete to his favorite target. Chat, Aiden, Aiden Campbell again, who will get down to about the two, three yard line. Looks a little shaken up there. Nice throw on the inside, but Campbell's up and he's, oh no. You know, he does look a little shaken up, but I don't think he wants to get out of the game. No, nah, he doesn't want to come out of the game with this close to a touchdown here. Yeah, Ref's checking on him, make sure he's okay though. Yeah. Nice little play, you know, smart to run in in front of the goalpost. The goalpost acts as a little bit of a pick or, or uh, uh, extra receiver out there. So th that would be now, uh, that would give them a first down. So first and goal from the two yard line. And this time Campbell does go down on one knee. So that will, uh, 
he'll be forced to come out of the game. And he did take a bit of a hit on that play, so it doesn't surprise me that he's feeling the effects. Yeah, so now you're going to see a little bit of a, of a change. Uh, you're going to take out the, I think Campbell's probably been their, their uh, number one receiver today. So see a little bit, see what they do. Uh, maybe the, with the ball being on about the approximately two yard line, they, they might want to But he made sure he run. ran off the field, Greg, because he's telling coaches I'm one, I'm one back in. Oh, for sure. So Van Konitz, uh, Van Konitz lining up under center. Takes the ball and again will push themselves right up and looks like a touchdown, Dakota. Keep it simple. That makes the keeper. score 16 to nothing. Okay, so we're going to be at the five yard line. Good starting series for the second half for the Dakota Lancers. Yeah, you know, that's a statement right there that they're going to come out, they're going to mix it up with run and pass. Uh, really nice play there on that, that key uh, uh, screen. Uh, they gained a huge amount of yards to get them down into that red zone. Burns up uh, over four and a half minutes to start off uh, the first, this, the third quarter as there's only seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. So Nasser is ready for the point after. It's up and it is good. So that makes the score 17 to no score. Dakota Collegiate over top of the Sturgeon Heights Huskies in our quarterfinal game of the Anvet uh, division of the Winnipeg High School Football League from Murray Field at Dakota Collegiate. And you know, we talked about this a little while ago, but it continues, Greg, we have got fantastic weather for uh, the, uh, th this game today. Yeah, no, you can't complain about the weather con with all things uh, uh, considered. Uh, finishing, so we have a, uh, looking at the at the Potter division, which is the number one division here, we had uh, St. Paul's uh, finishing first, we had Sisler at second, Dakota third, Vincent Massey, Winnipeg fourth, Grant Park fifth, Sturgeon Heights sixth, Steinbach seven, and Garden City eight. Um, I know earlier this year we watched a couple of great games in, uh, in the Potter division and, and uh, looking forward to some great football action for the next couple weeks in the Winnipeg High School Football League. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, we've actually seen some pretty good football league over the past year or so from, uh, and, uh, you know, really enjoying being part of this. And So on that kickoff, it's p fielded on the play by number seven from uh, the Sturgeon uh, Huskies, Riley Pierce, who will bring it up to the 41-yard line, and that's where Sturgeon Heights will take over for its first offense of the second half. Prendergast fakes inside and will take it down and get about a gain of about four yards. Looks like he gets up to about the 45 yard line. Okay, second down, second down up here. So obviously, uh, you know, Sturgeon Heights, they want to come out and, and just get the ball moving, right? They, you know, they haven't scored anything in the first half, so let's get some first downs. Let's, let's get a little bit of momentum going and establishing that line of scrimmage. Still Hopefully you can get some points on the board. Yeah, still lots of time in the games to make something happen. So Prendergast looks and he'll be pushed out and tries to find oh. something eventually. Sacked in behind the play by number 75 from Dakota. Ran out to his left and there was really nothing there. So brought down on the play by number 75, Jordan Friesen. That's the second sack of the game. And is, according to our stats, should be his sixth sack of the year as he had four coming into this game, according to our stats. Good pursuit by Jordan. Yeah, great job. He's got those long arms, so he's able to wrap up and just get enough of Pendergrass to bring him down. So uh, Pendergrass is lucky in terms of uh, not getting as big a loss as it could have been. So it's a third and about 13, so they will punt. Kick is up and a good kick away will be fielded at about the 45 yard line. Flag on the play, no yards for sure, but going to the outside and eventually brought down at the 48 yard line of Dakota. Nick Conway with uh, with the punt return for Dakota there. I didn't pardon, get a tackler. Pardon me, 48 yard line of Sturgeon, but uh, this is going to be a 15 yard penalty given that uh, the ball is caught in the air. So we're waiting for the call from the referee, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be no uh, no yards. So they're declining that uh, the, the penalty. Dakota will decline it because they got uh, more yards than penalties worth. 
So again, they have really, Dakota has really good field position here just over the, the 50 yard marker in, in Sturgeon Heights territory. So we have a uh, timeout again. Looks like we're fixing up the yard markers on the sidelines. So we'll just have a second for that. So Sturgeon really in need of a stop here to uh, get the ball back and get something going. But in that note, Bancona goes back, nothing there. So he'll look outside, throws outside to his receiver, number 21 from Dakota, who will break a couple of tackles and end up getting about eight yards on the play. So number 21 from Dakota. Hello, say, 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 say. But we saw a couple weeks ago, we called his name a number of times and first time I could think of calling him this afternoon. Yeah, I haven't seen him catch anything or, or run the ball. So uh, obviously Dakota has some pretty good depth that uh, running back and receiver. So second and one, maybe a long, uh, uh, a bit over one yard to go. Hands it off inside and getting the first down, just over the first down yard marker. Trying to get a number for you. Looks like is Dre Ward again. So he's had a good game today. I want to point out that uh, uh, Aiden Campbell's back in the game for Dakota as that receiver. So glad to see him back, back into the offensive uh, uh, side of the ball here. Yeah, and he appears to be walking all right. So first and ten. Not going to hands off, and he will hands off to his running back number 31, who will try to find something to the left side, but is pursued and might get to back to the original line of scrimmage maybe a little bit more flags down on the play looks like that flag is thrown in the uh, sturgeon height backfield so you know using my crystal ball here could be uh, holding on dakota so that would be number 31 carson kadu another name we haven't called a lot today but we're getting involved in trying to do some other things this game and show some other looks to the sturgeon heights defense yeah so the referee just called holding dakota uh looks like sturgeon heights might have declined that penalty so uh putting Dakota in second and nine. What would you, would you have done that, Greg? Well, uh, it, no. you know, sure, second why not? I mean, second down, five. they stop from here, they get the ball back. So second and nine, Van Conan looks, at it, and he's gonna look deep to his favorite receiver, Campbell, but well over his head, so nothing there. That was the same pattern that they ran at the end of the second quarter there to put him in a nice uh, field goal position. Previous time though, a flag thrown on the play for pass interference that didn't happen, so third and nine. It's a hard throw for a quarter, for a, for a young quarterback to make is that, that corner uh, pattern. So Hassan Nasser will look to punt the ball away with so 350 left in the third quarter. He will hold the ball, there's nothing there and he will find some room to his left side. Continue up and it looks like he may have the first down. Looks like, uh, you know, he, I don't think that was a called fake. I think basically uh, it, it was a slower snap and, and uh, he looked up and there was pressure in his face here. We'll see on the replay here. Maybe saw a bit of room. A lot of pressure coming up the middle on him. So smart play by uh, by uh, Nasser to, to take off with the ball and he's athletic enough to, to convert that first down. And it is a first down for the Dakota Lancers so they will continue moving the ball and take over first and 10 from the Sturgeon Heights 27 yard line. Well, if Dakota's able to convert this and get some points on the board, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a, a tough uphill battle for Sturgeon Heights to come back here. Okay, you're on. First and ten, Akona goes back and holds the ball up, and there, so he pulls it down, and he will go to his right side, and skip off a couple of tackles, and eventually be brought down for a gain of a yard or two. A little bit of a high snap there that I think maybe threw threw up the timing on that play a little bit. Good heads up job by Van Conner to hang onto the ball and make something happen. So they're not giving him much on that. So it's still almost a full 10 yards. So second and we're going to say 10. Van Conner this time looks, he looks to his left, comes back to his right and the closest person available that time was one of his offensive linemen, number 63 from Dakota, uh, Hayden Duick, but 
wouldn't think that he's an eligible receiver. No, they had a, they had a screen call to the right, so that opponent was rolling left, making the defense roll left, but there's pressure right up the middle, and I didn't catch the number of the, of the Husky uh, uh, defen defender who was able to get into Van Conan's grill there, but uh, he's rolling left, and he's going to throw the screen back to the right-hand side, but it was just, um, just didn't have the time. So Dakota will go for a field goal. Kicking from about the 33-yard line, kick is up, and it will be wide to the right and bringing it out of the end zone, getting up to about the 10-yard line, back up to the 15, just about to the 20-yard line. Flag down again. And I'm looking at the one of the Sturgeon Heights players, and he's not too happy about it, so I have a feeling this is against Sturgeon Heights. Uh, just watching uh, the replay of the, of the kick there, I wonder if Nasser maybe just rushed that kick a little bit and a little bit of a, of a, of a hook on that one uh, coming off, the, off his toe there. So it looks like the penalty is going to be against Sturgeon Heights, so they're going to move him back uh, into the end zone. Uh, and again, one of those one of those tough calls where do you tell the, the receiver to give up the point and get the ball in about the 35? Or obviously he ran it out of the end zone and, and now they're penalized and now they're back on the five yard line. So, so first and ten, and Prendergrass will be starting in the shotgun it's a long deep field. in their own side as Sturgeon Heights. Just as the ball snapped, the whistle is blown to blows the play dead. I don't think they were quite ready yet. Looks like the, the yardstick crew is a little late getting there again. It's something we often see in high school football is people seem to get trained every game, so it happens. So here we go again. Do you call the same play or do you call something different, right? Yeah, he will hand inside to his go-to quarterback running back who will get up to about the 10 yard line so a gain of about 5 yards on the play by Jacob Berlin Allen and Jacob uh, has had to really grind out some of those yards this afternoon because Dakota has done a fairly good job of containing him he's had a few where he's busted uh, to, to make something happen but basically what he has got, he has uh, really had to, to work for today. Yeah, you're right, Brian. I mean, they, they had, Sturgeon Heights has not had any play that's been over 20 yards or some big play. So Prendergrath's back, and he will throw the ball up, and we may get one of those in a complete. Oh, there we go. All the way down to the 38-yard line. Complete on the play by number seven, Riley Pierce. Big play for Sturgeon Heights, and they move the ball and maybe make something happen here. I guess I spoke too soon here. Yeah. So good for Sturgeon Heights. They're out about just shy of the 40-yard line there. So nice, uh, nice pass, beautiful pass actually, and nice catch by uh, uh, Pierce. Good throw by Prendergast. So that will get them out deep from their own end zone, and he will look to pass again. There's nothing there, and he'll be contained and pulls it in, takes it up, uh, and might get a yard of two or three. Uh, uh, sorry, a run of two or three yards on the play, but. Continued to look for, you know, that passing play that just wasn't there this time. Yeah, I mean, Surgeon Heights, uh, you know, they got to get some points on the board fairly quickly here to get back in this game. It's uh, there's uh, only 15 seconds left in the third quarter here, so they got to start uh, start feeling the pressure to get some points up. This should be the last play of the third quarter. Prendergrass se second and about six, seven yards on the play. Hands up to Berlin Allen, who will go to his left side, and again. Will work his way up close to the first down yard uh, marker, Greg, but basically all Berlin Allen making something happen out of what should have been nothing there. Great job by Berlin Allen. Yeah, you know, that was a, a really nice run. You could forget the replay of this. Uh, uh, you could see that his uh, feet are, are going all over the place and, and uh, was able to cut back and make some beautiful uh, adjustments to get that first down, or it looks to be a first down. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to give him a first down. And we have a switch, uh, switch of sides, of course. So we're going to be going, uh, Sturgeon will now be going from your uh, left to right. 
we well, have an injured Dakota player down, uh, number 66, Matthew Patrick. Oh, sorry, wrong side. Not, Connor Lusha, uh, so a little shaken up on that last play here. So we have a little bit of a break here in uh, in the game. Looks like he's walking off on his own uh, on on his own. Uh, uh, you can see the crowd here too. We got a great crowd here standing at uh, at Murray Field and. Obviously, a lot of people are pretty excited to, to finally see the, the completion and uh, the building completion of Murray Field. Been a lot of people uh, who have put in a lot of time and effort into, into the fundraising and development of the field. So congratulations to Dakota uh, staff and, uh, and, and the community here in uh, Learyville School Division to, to build this wonderful, fantastic field. Prendergrass so looks back and will throw the ball almost right away and complete. And will maybe get two or three yards on the play, complete to his receiver, number 15, Jake Roger. Great job by number 21, uh, Sese from Dakota, to, to come up and make that tackle and limit him to only about four yards. So I will tell you, I, I add to what you're saying there, Greg, and you really do need to come down and check out this field because it is absolutely fantastic, and they've done an excellent job on it. So second and about six. A bit of a high snap brought in and brought down and taken up the middle by Berlin Allen who will continue to work for those yards. Looks like a gain of about four on the play but will be a yard or two short of the first down. Also two going into the field here will be uh, lights. Uh, there's uh, There are the light standards that are already in the ground here for, so they're, I think they're just waiting for for the light post to, to come in and we'll have lights soon. And of course uh, the, the stadium uh, seating will be in place by this time next year so looking forward to having that all in place. So there's flags on the play here. It looks like it, it could be Dakota offside. They may not have given a full yard on that play. So that makes it first and 10 from the Dakota 47 yard line. And Sturgeon Heights will continue to move the ball, try to make something happen with 10.50 left in the fourth quarter. Complete to number 82 who will catch the ball and, and fight his way up for another few yards and close to the first down. And that would be number 82, Daniel Adam. First time we've called his name today. So Connor Lushaw for Dakota, number 66, is back in the game. So glad to see you doing all right. And I'm looking from up here. It appears to me like they've got the first down. We're just waiting for the call from the referee. And they are giving him a first down. So Sturgeon Heights is moving the ball. Yeah, you know, nice to see Sturgeon uh, getting some nice positive yards. They had a nice uh, long pass earlier in the game. And uh, I I'm really uh, impressed with their passing game. Um, just looking at some of the players there, number 77 and, and number 7, uh, they have some big, tall receivers here, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to the air a little bit more here. Well, and that might open things up for Berlin Allen also if, uh, you know, they could start spreading out a little no, bit. And, you know, Why are you me stand? Little, uh, maybe should have been happening a bit sooner in the game, but the reality is they found something that's worked, so maybe they can make something happen and get themselves back into this game again. Yeah, when you have a nice tall receiver, I mean, one thing you, as a coach you can never do is you can't keep size. So, so handoff inside to number five from Sturgeon Heights, who will fight and get about three, four yards on the play. So that would be Simon Winsness. We called his name a few times this afternoon. I guess early evening. Yeah, I mean, those are grinder yards there. Nice hard work by uh, the running back to keep his legs pumping. Four yards, four yards, four yards, four yards. So Prendergrass back in the snap will pitch back again to Winsness, who will fight his way up and get close to the first down. Boy, he's got some quickness there going Yeah, he got, he got some wheels going there. There, I could hear the referees yelling at the D line for Dakota to back up. They're not giving him full yards. So, so uh, I don't know if they've got the yards here for first down, but... There is a penalty, and, and it will be offside against Dakota. So I would venture they're going to take the first uh, the penalty, so that it still gives them the second uh, uh, down. If even if uh, they don't have the full yards, Greg, wouldn't you agree? Uh, they declined it, so it looks oh, like it's first down. 
Oh, so they did get a first down. Yeah, they got enough yards for the first down. So from, from where I was standing, I wasn't sure if they got it or not. So good job for Sturgeon Heights to make something happen here with 944 left in the fourth quarter. So first and 10 from the Dakota 27 yard line. Prendergast takes the ball and will hand it off inside to, again to number five, Winsness. And again, it's going to be offside against the Dakota D line. They weren't, uh, they're jumping around, moving on, uh, and they didn't give a full yard there. You know, Dakota's defense has to just settle down and, and get, get ready for the snap of the ball. Obviously, Sturgeon Heights is trying to hurry up here and get things moving quickly. So Dakota's defensive line and, and front seven just has to settle down and, and get lined up and know what the play is. And so, and it seems to me that Sturgeon is trying to mix things up a bit, change up some of the things they've been doing since the start of the game, and it is working. They're able to move the ball. They've got a good series going here. Yes, so sir. first and five, Prendergrass back in the shotgun, and he will look to pass, and he will look to his left side. Complete on the play and inside for the touchdown. Yep, they're giving him a touchdown. So again, I was talking earlier about those nice tall receivers. Joss Dale, number nine, uh, looks to be a lot taller than corner out there. So nice throw by Pendergrass just over the corner. And, uh, you know, it's a 50-50 ball, but when you're that tall, you're able to reach up and make the play. We'll see the replay here. Yeah, And so that, with 9.09 .09 left in the fourth quarter, puts St. Surgeon Heights on the board and gets them into the game and lots of time left in this game to uh, make uh, make something happen Greg Yeah, there's great job by Josh Dale there at number nine just to use his body to shield the DB and, and, and use his hands to catch the ball Nice nice pass and catch. So they will line up for the point after That's now oh, bad snap and so they will have to fall and it did nothing nothing there So that could be a big point Brian so with 9.09 left in the fourth quarter, Dakota continues to lead, but has that a little bit of that taken away from them? Up 17 to six. Yeah, so again, in high school football, there, there's a lot of, the, the snap has to be there, the hold has to be there, the kick has to be there. So a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of things could go wrong with that play. It's not as, the NFL and CFL makes it look a lot easier than what it actually is. So could be a huge point there. Obviously, uh, you know, if, if Sturgeon Heights uh, will anticipate, see if they're going to do a short kick or are they going to put it deep for Dakota and, and put their uh, Sturgeon Heights defense on to try to hem Dakota in. But if they go short kick here, they recover the ball. That one point could be a huge play. It's still, uh, you know, two point or three, uh, three score game. Well, it does not look like they're loading up one side. So I got to think that they're going to be uh, kicking off here, Greg. Who kicked off and fielded it about the 35 yard line by Campbell. And uh, he'll fight his way up to about the 41 yard line of Dakota, and that's where they will take off, take over for this offense with 9.05 left in the fourth quarter, up 17 to 6. Yeah, good job by Campbell just to come down with it, and ball security is really important at this stage in the game. So if you're Dakota, you're probably going to want to come out here and get a, at least a couple first downs and, and burn some time off that clock. So Vancona continues to like to work from the shotgun, so he will hand it off to number five, who will go to his right and might get about two, three yards on the play. Yeah, so Nick Conway, number five, with the, with the uh, nice little uh, run to the right-hand side of the Dakota offensive line. Good job by the Sturgeon Heights line to shut him down and only give him a couple, two, three yards on the play. So they will be second and about seven. McConaught continues in the shotgun with two backs behind him. Takes the ball back and he will look down the field and incomplete to his intended receiver, Chad, uh, Aiden Campbell, pardon me. Ball was just a little bit behind Campbell on that play. So that makes it third and seven, and it appears that Dakota will punt the ball away. So exactly what the Sturgeon Height coach had, uh, had hoped for, and two and out. Kind of needed to, with the 8.20 left in the fourth quarter, to get that ball back. You really do need to make sure you have as much time as possible ahead of you right now. Ball's back. Kick is up, and good job by 
and asked her to get it away and it fielded about the 40, 38 yard line. Anyway, number five will go to his left side. Not much there and pretty much contained. Might get up to about the 41, 42 yard line. Tackled on the play by number seven from Dakota. Nasser. Gotta love when the punter's down there making the tackles too. That's being into the game. Yep. So Sturgeon Heights will take over from their 41 and a half yard line with uh, 7.54 in the fourth quarter. So uh, I think, you know, Sturgeon Heights will probably go back to what worked from them on the last series where they scored a touchdown and, and uh, you know, mix up a little bit of run and, and throw to those tall, wide receivers. Uh, a little bit of a mismatch out there on the corner with some of these guys, so might as well go with what worked. Runs this in the shotgun with one back and will hand it off to that back. Number five, Winces, who will find some room to his left, right side and continue down and eventually pushed out of bounds at the Dakota 47-yard line, 46-yard line. Great run by Winsness. A couple uh, Dakota players are complaining about holding on that play, uh, but again, it's just nice, nice speed and nice quickness out of the backfield by Winsness. Second job of the table. So they, Sturgeon Heights will have the ball first and 10 from the 46 yard line. Prendergrass continues in the shotgun with one back. Will fake the handoff and will roll to his left and throw down and complete to his receiver for a gain of about three or four yards on the play. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate for, uh, for Sturgeon Heights. A little bit of a low throw there, so the receiver had to drop down to the knee to catch it. So uh, in amateur rules, once a receiver is, is puts the knee down or elbow down, they are ruled down by, by uh, the referees. So it was taken by Jake Roger. So second and about five, actually. So again, look at the complete, and this time they're saying incomplete to his intended receiver, this time number 15. Again, Jake Roger. Might as well go back to what was working for you. Yeah. So they're going to go for it here, Brian. 6.55 left in the fourth quarter. And probably a bit of a sense of urgency for Sturgeon. But they have been playing much better this quarter. At yeah, I mean, they, they've had some nice big plays this half. So hand off inside to Winsness, who will go and find some room, but it will be stopped well short of the third down. Turnover on downs for the Dakota Lancers, who will take over from what appears to be their 37, 38 yard line. Great defensive stand by the Dakota Lancers, Greg. You know, it was, it was hard to tell numbers, but I'm gonna, I, I think it was number 20, Scott Brackel from, uh, from Dakota, who stuffed that run play right in the middle, right in a gap there. So great job by Dakota defense uh, to come out and, and uh, stop Sturgeon Heights in their in their uh, tracks there. Still lots of time for the Sturgeon Heights Huskies if they can get the ball back. But Dakota will take over from their own 38 yard line, first and 10. Ben Conant's back and will hand it off and immediately to the inside is Dre Ward again. And we've called his number, uh, we've said this many times, but we've called his number a lot as he continues to be the running back workhorse for the Dakota Lancers today. Yeah, you know, th those are a tough yards. I mean, everybody in the stadium right now knows that Dakota's going to run the ball. They want to kill the clock. So when you can get three, four yards of pop and everybody knows you're going to run it, that, that's a good job by the line. So second and about eight yards on the play. Does look to pass and he will throw the ball up to his receiver. Num oh, right through the hands of his intended receiver, number two. And that would be Josh Janssen. Yeah, he was wide open. The ball kind of hung up, uh, and, and it's one of those situations where being a young football player, it's, it's, he's probably telling himself, don't drop it, don't drop it, versus make the catch, make the catch. And sometimes when you're telling yourself not to drop it, sometimes that's what happens. So. His defender was pretty close, uh, and, you know, giving him something to think about as the ball was coming in also. So yeah. so be punted away on the play by Nasser. The ball is up and a great kick by Nasser and it's fielded at the 35 yard line. Going up into the inside is number seven, Sergio, but fumble on the play and picked up. And there is nothing between the end zone and Van Cornet yeah. who picked up the ball in the fumble. And touchdown. Touchdown by number 10. Reed Van Conet. Nice scoop and score. Great job. And you know, too bad for Sturgeon Heights. Number seven, uh, 
uh, Riley Pierce. Uh, you know, had a great little return going there, and the ball, you know, I think the Dakota player was just able to, to strip the ball out. Fortunate bounce for Van Cone, it bounced right into his hands, and he was able to score on that uh, on that fumble recovery. And I'm trying to see here, and hopefully we'll see the replay if we can get it back up, uh, who he had downfield blocking and helping him out on the play, because that really made a difference, as there was one Sturgeon Heights defender who possibly had a chance against Van, Van Cone, but just wasn't able to make it happen. So we'll wait and see if uh, if Dakota can convert on the on the convert here. Obviously, this is kind of a dagger in uh, Sturgeon Heights' uh, heart on on this. But uh, you know, we've we've seen crazy Don't football in high school football where teams have come back and scored two or three touchdowns really quickly. So, um, so yeah, that's one of the, the things we're going to look for here. So what what's happening here is uh, Dakota d was missing one player. So what they've decided to do is is take a delay of the game. Uh, penalty, so the player comes on and, and they'll, they'll move the ball back five yards and kick the convert. I'm smart for being warm. So 5.25 left in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, Dakota up 23-6 to six over the Sturgeon Huskies. Kick is up, and it is no good. It no is good. wide. So the score will remain 24-6 to six with 5.25 left in. Time is really of the essence now for Sturgeon Heights and really will need to make something happen and make have to make it happen quickly. Well, coach, head coach Ray Jarvis must be very happy with his uh, with his Lancer team. Uh, I know last year when we covered their their games, they were a very young team and and uh, kind of learning through uh, through experience last year and some tough losses last year. That you know certainly the team has come out and 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 shown that they have the experience, that they have the knowledge and and and. Uh, you know, when when you're when you have that experience and a confidence, good things will happen, right? So, uh, the, you know, the, the players being able to go out there and and, uh, and and cause that fumble and being able to be in the right spot for that uh, fumble recovery, it, it, it shows that they uh, they showed a lot of uh, uh, per perseverance and capabilities as a football team. Kickoff is away, fielded by Winsness at uh, about the 5, 10 yard line. Will go to his left, find a bit of a room. Eventually brought down and hit on the play by number 95 from Dakota. And that will be Daniel Ode o Okedra. Make a change! Let's go, White, make a change! All right, so uh, Sturgeon Height, first and ten. So we do have a bit of a check on our scoreboard, folks. It's 23-6 to six for Dakota. So Prendergrass is getting some pressure. We'll try to find some pursuit on the play, but throws it outside and... Nice. Incomplete to yeah. his intended receiver. Nice effort by uh, Prendergrass, and he's uh, intending that throw for Nathaniel uh, Steinman. Uh, you know, beautiful throw and, and just out of the outstretch uh, arms, just out of the outstretch uh, reach of the arm of uh, of the receiver there. So, I'm I'm really impressed with Pendergrass's uh, uh, capabilities to scramble. This time he will pitch out to Winsness, uh, to who will cut to his left side and try to find something there. Might get about six yards on the play. Obviously. Uh, you know, this is three down territory for Sturgeon Heights. They're, they're not going to bring out the punter now. They, they need to get some first downs and, and, and get the ball into the end zone. So third and three, 425 left in the fourth quarter. Down 23 to six to Dakota. I gotta know that's three down football for the rest of the game. So Prendergast will look, there's nothing to his left side. So he will look, sorry, to his left side. Complete to his receiver, number nine, who'll get out and eventually pushed out of bounds at about the 20. T3, 24 yard line. Great throw, flag in the backfield. It looks like it's coming all the way back, Greg. Indication is holding. Yeah, that's one of those things in high school football where you just, oh, as a, as a coach, you just cringe when you see those penalty flags in the end zone or in your backfield. Holding calls are, are uh, very difficult to, to take when you're uh, dealing with young football players. Great catch though by number nine, Josh Dale by uh, Sturgeon Heights there. 
So unfortunately, that's a 10-yard penalty, so that would make this third and 13, and as you said, three-down football, they're going to have to go for it. Yeah, so uh, just play it again, right, for Sturgeon Heights. So Dakota's, uh, you know, as, as a defensive guy, you, you're going to tell your DBs, keep everything in front of you here. Pointer guard looks, and he will look down the field to He's looking for his intended receiver, number seven, and it's up and through his hands and incomplete, and Dakota will take over on downs. Uh, Sturgeon Heights is very upset that there's no pass interference on this, but I, I think it's a good no call. Both players were, were adjusting and going for the football here. Look at the, yeah, I, I don't know if... Uh, if that would have been pass interference, it's a tough call, and I understand them being frustrated, especially at this point in time in the game. But, but you know what? DBs have the right to the football too, so they're both jockeying for positions. So I, I think, you know, give the refs credit there. I think it was a good no non-call there. So 3:35 left in the fourth quarter, and Dakota will take over down on downs in great field position at about the 33-yard line of Sturgeon Heights. I mean, as you said a while ago, I anticipate we'll just see a number of run plays to finish up the game, Greg. Yeah, I, I think Dakota just called timeout here because they're running out of time on the, on the time clock here. But with 3.20 left, you, you know, Dakota, has a, a, you're going to want to come out here and, and just run the ball, get a few first downs here and kill the clock and, and just don't give the ball back to Sturgeon. So credit to Coach Eric Vincent from uh, Sturgeon Heights to getting his teams ready for the, you know, uh, for what has been a great football game. You know, at times I think, uh, you know, not benefited from uh, a couple penalties have taken some things away from them and a couple of bad uh, bounces, but have played better than the scores indicated. Yeah, I mean, all credit. I mean, Sturgeon Heights is a, is a very good coach team and, uh, you know, shows some really good potential here. So handoff inside and going up at just his own left side is again number 34, Dre Ward from Dakota. I can't hear anyone over there, by the way. A gain of about one or two yards on the play. Yeah, this is where, uh, you know, if, if Coach Jarvis has any complaint here, it's, you know, this is when your O line has to take control and, and basically, you know, get five, six yards of pop to kill that clock. So now it's uh, second down and, and long and probably a throwing situation here. The play blown dead before it even starts, and we're going to have a time count against Dakota. Two forty four left in the fourth quarter. So time count violation taking a little bit too long. So uh, move back five yards here and be second down in about uh, fourteen yards. Certainly passing situation for Dakota. For a first down. Three minute warning as well. Second 14 and hands off and inside to Ward, who will fight up for about three, maybe four yards, but will be stopped well short of the first down. Yeah, I mean, Dakota's just running the clock. They're, they're you know, obviously with the run play, uh, the clock will continue to run, and, uh, you know, Sturgeon Heights has the option to call timeout or not, but they're going to turn the ball over here, probably, probably punt it, you know, send the punter out and say, try to put it out on the one-yard line, five-yard line. Give uh, Sturgeon Heights a, a long field to, to try to score a touchdown here. On the ball, on the ball, let's go wide. And Nasser's done a good job of kicking this afternoon, so I anticipate that he'll be able to make something like you're talking about happen. Yeah, so Sturgeon Heights, uh, obviously a little late getting their punt return team out, so they ended up did, uh, calling a timeout here. A little bit of time came off the clock, though. Oh, oh, oh. So obviously, uh, 
you know, looking at the Dakota punt team here, we got Van Conant, who's uh, one of the upbacks, um, which is interesting because you usually don't leave your quarterback on the punt team, but there's a lot of potential there when he when he's the upback, he would be able to to uh, do some fakes and stuff like that. Nasser will kick to his right side and really short. Yeah, not a great kick for uh, for Dakota here. Uh, it was interesting because as you said that, and uh, I was watching Van Kuyen, and he's not afraid to block either. He was in there taking, uh, you know, protecting the uh, puncher on the on the play there. So. Yeah. Well, I, I know uh, Dakota had a, a fundraising dinner, and and uh, one of the guest speakers was Matt Dunnigan, and Matt Dunnigan was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good quarterback. He liked to, you know, throw his body around out there too. And I, I know that Dunnigan and. Uh, uh, Van Conant were able to get together and obviously he played with his uh, Van Conant's dad and they were able to get together and, and uh, I think uh, Matt Dunnigan gave uh, Van Conant some, some tips. So Prendergrass puts the ball up and right through the hands or maybe tipped a bit to his intended receiver from Sturgeon number 82, Daniel Adam. And we've got an injury on the play from Sturgeon so we'll be held up for another minute or two here, Greg, but as we wind down with 2.24 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, on behalf of the uh, LRSD TV, and before we, you know, the end of the game's on, I just want to thank you for Brand joining us. Here. My name is Brian Cameron, and I, Greg Kiesman has been with me, and we've been able to bring to you a really, what's been a really good football game today, and I've enjoyed being here. And I hope that you have too. Yeah, I mean, he's the, kudos to both teams. I mean, Sturgeon Heights shown some some fantastic uh, skill and capabilities, and, and a very good, very good coach team. Um, you know, unfortunately, they haven't had the big plays that Dakota's had this uh, today. But uh, you know, certainly Sturgeon Heights. Uh, um, you know, if if this is the end of their season, well, con congratulations on a good good year. You're playing in a very tough division in the Potter Division, and uh, for Dakota, hey, onwards and upwards to the semifinals and. And who knows, maybe in uh, in a couple weeks they'll be playing in the Anovitz, Anovitz Bowl at the uh, can at the Investors Group Field. I was just going to say Canada Innsville, but the Investors Group Field. So lots of lots of positives coming for, for Dakota here. Uh, again, last year they had a, a very young team and, and uh, covering their game games last year, you can see a lot of returning players this year, including Van Conan at quarterback, and they're they're showing a, a lot of poison and, and character. Uh, and uh, you know who knows? Me. Maybe they'll they'll be able to make it to the end of its bowl. And, and on that note, LRSD TV will be covering all four of those uh, final games from Investors Group Field on LRSD.TV. So come and check out uh, and join us for those games as we look forward to some more excellent Winnipeg High School football league action. Let's go, eight! You're my hero. So now Sturgeon will get going again, 2.24 left in the fourth quarter, down 23 to six, starting second and 10 from their 32 yard line. And Berlin Allen will be wrapped up pretty quickly on the play, might even have a bit of a loss as it appears he goes down at about the 30 yard line. Yeah, just not a lot of room there for, uh, for any type of running play. Yeah, so they're indicating a loss of about two two yards, so third and long. And I anticipate we'll see that Prendergast will be putting the ball up on this one. Yeah, or either that Let's or, or try to Woo! try to earn the first down with his change legs. Change your destiny, White. <laughs> Come on. So Prendergast does look back. He will be completed. Caught on the play, but turnover on downs is well short. So Dakota will take over again. Thrown to number 15. Jake Roger. Nice cover on the play by 57. Josh Pollock, uh, we had mentioned him earlier in the game. Uh, one of the players to highlight, so great job by him to close the gap and, and make the tackle right away. So good job, Dakota defense. So I anticipate we'll see that Dakota will do what they can to kill most of this clock now. Up uh, 23 to six. Eduardo had no mercy on me, so. And we'll say it again, congratulations to Coach Ray Jarvis and the Dakota Lancers and uh, Coach Eric Vincent from the Sturgeon Huskies on a great game today. And so on the first and ten, hands off and goes to the right side and Handle it. 
getting a little chippy out there. And some frustration, I'm sure, from both sides. Lots of great hits today. That's the uh, one thing that that uh, stands out to to, to me here is, is uh, you know running backs ran hard. There were some great defensive tackles and um, technically sound football game. Nice to see. a loss of a yard on the play, so second and 11. You're on. Fourth and one. back to pass, and we'll hand off to, this time, number three, who will try to find some room on the right side, but flags fly all over the place. Hand it off to number three, Jackson Maddox. Looks like this is going to be holding against Dakota. I think it was one of the lead, or, or right on the corner. A little bit of a hold there, so depending on yardage gained, it could be uh, either accepted or declined. So they're calling uh, 31 holding. So it looks like they're declining the penalty, and Dakota's bringing out their punt team. So, minute 38, fourth quarter. Nasser will punt again. Almost blocked on the play, but into the corner to number seven, and we field that about the five yard line and get up to about the 15. I like that. Pushed out of bounds. <laughs> oh, there's some there's yeah, play. flags are on the place, and you know there's some frustration on the Sturgeon Heights uh, oh Huskies. God, yeah, yeah the, one of the Dakota players was uh, was blocked and was down on the ground. The Sturgeon Heights uh, player pushed him over. So, of course, the refs are going to flag that every time. So already deep in their own end zone, and, end zone, and they're going to get pushed back again. Yeah, it's just a selfish play, really. I mean, your team is down. You need some yards. No reason for that to happen. So Sturgeon Heights is in a, in a huge hole here. All the way down to their one yard line, Greg. Yep. Sure, Coach Vincent isn't very pleased with that player. So first and ten, Prendergrass will be in his own end zone. Hand off to uh, Berlin Allen, who will try to find something and maybe get a couple of yards, but pretty much gang tackled at about the three yard line. Minute 13 left in the fourth quarter. We continue to wind things down. So it appears to be a gain of about three on the play, second and seven. Now under a minute left in the fourth quarter, Prendergrass looks and he will look to pass and he will go to his side and caught but dropped down right away is number nine, Josh Dale from, Stur from Sturgeon. Unfortunately, he slipped on that play. So uh, again, the minute uh, in amateur football, the minute the knee or contact with the ground occurs, it's uh, whistled. Third and one and it appears Prendergast will keep the ball and push up and should have the first down. Yeah. First down, but there is a, a Husky that's down. And it looks to be in some pain. Well, Greg, uh, trying to figure out here who uh, Dakota will likely be playing in the uh, Anavet Bowl or the... Uh, Semifinals? Well, um, I believe it's uh, first versus eight, and then uh, two, Sisler versus Steinbach, seven, two versus seven. Um, and then four versus five. So after that, I'm not sure who 
depending who wins those games, I'm not sure who they'll play, but obviously next week. In the meantime, we're waiting for the injured uh, Sturgeon High School. Uh, Huskies player to be taken care of and he's clearly in some discomfort and 43 seconds left still to play in the fourth quarter. So November 2nd or November 3rd depending on, on which teams finish, uh, finish up. Uh, games will either be at Eastside Eagles Field or uh, Investors Group Field so check out the uh, whsfl.ca website and, and we'll, you'll be able to check out uh, when and where Dakota will play next. So we're getting a little assistance off the field and I'm trying to get a number for the Sturgeon offensive lineman. It looks to me like number 66, Matthew Patrick. Not 100% sure of that. In the meantime, uh, he's off the field and we'll now get ready to, to finish up this game. So as we're, uh, as we're having a little bit of a pause here, just a, a big shout out to, once again, all the students and uh, uh, student uh, camera people for LRSD TV and a, and a huge shout out to Mr. Ken Plaintink for, uh, for the, the teacher in charge of that program. He's doing a fantastic job with uh, working with all the students. Totally student run broadcast program and we have a lot of fun. So Prendergast back and looks down the field and will throw a good strike to the inside and complete to his oh. receiver will get up to a boat. The 26-27 yard line, complete to number 21, Matt Fedek. That rattled around some fillings, that hit. You know, there's no, there's no quit in these players just yet. So there's about 15 seconds left in the, uh, in the game here, and, and players are still uh, throwing their bodies around, which is fun to see. This should be our last play of the game. Bring it on, looks past and he will throw the deep and for his intended receiver number nine. Intended for Josh Dale. And the time has run out, so we have a final of 23 to 6 Dakota Collegiate over top of the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Congratulations to the Dakota Lancers who will move on to the semi-final of the Anavet Bowl next week. And uh, who they're playing remains to be determined. Uh, in a, a good, tough game against the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Uh, again, as we said a little a while ago, uh, the score does not reflect as well as the Sturgeon Heights Huskies played. It, it's a tough ending, but you know they were able to move the ball at times, but just didn't benefit from uh, ben, you know penalties and a couple of bad uh, fumbles and plays took the, took this game away from them, Craig. Yeah, I mean they kind of remind me of Dakota last year, maybe a little bit on the young side, and, and uh, players aren't uh, as physically uh, mature or. or Whatever, but uh, you know, all credit to Dakota. They, I know, last year when we covered them last, uh, they had uh, a little bit of a, of a young team. So, congratulations to Dakota. And, and as we watch in some of the highlights here, you can see that you know both teams are well coached and, and some great, fantastic athletes uh, making some great plays out there. On behalf of the Louis Riel School Division, LRSD TV, uh, the student-run program here, brought uh, bringing you the Winnipeg High School Football League action. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks at the Investors Group Field, and uh, I hope you enjoyed our, our broadcast. Thank you, folks.